Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name's Nathan Hirsch. Thanks so much for watching. I'm here at Glen Echo Park, which is one of my favorite places in all of DC to take photographs. This was an amusement park for a long period of time, up until about the 1960s, and uh, now it's actually just a, a multi-purpose art space. And the cool thing is that they kept a lot of the original buildings, like the Denzel Carousel behind me, uh, with the original colors as well. So you feel like you're back in time. It's got a very retro feel, uh, which is great for taking photographs. All right, so if you're watching this video, you either have an older Hasselblad film camera uh, or a similar camera, and you're curious about using a digital back with it, or you're just bored out of your mind, but either way, I'm happy to have you here. So I wanna take a closer look at, at what it's like to use one of these digital backs. Is it worth it for you? Uh, and I wanna really go over some of the pros and cons of using these backs in the field. If you're looking for a digital back to use with your Hasselblad camera, you've got a lot of options right now, including Hasselblad itself has a brand new model, which looks fantastic, um, usable, high ISO at 6400. It's got a flip screen, uh, kind of emulating um, your uh, chimney viewfinder with the Hasselblad camera. It comes in at around $7,000, so that's something to really think about. Um, if you have the cash to, to burn on that, it's fantastic, but if you are looking for a more economical model or economical option, I want to explain why I think that this um, Phase 1 P25 Plus in particular is the sweet spot. So in this video, I'm going to go over three pros and three cons of using one of these older digital backs, and hopefully that'll help you decide if it's right for you. All right, so the first pro I want to talk about is the color. Now, this is probably one of the most subjective things you can discuss with, with cameras in, in general. Um, but uh, for me, I, I love the look of the older CCD sensors, which um, this phase one has. Now, CCD was the, the, the main primary sensor technology up until CMOS um, took over. And again, very subjective, but I personally prefer the look of the CCD, uh, the files, the colors themselves have a, a very natural, almost film-like, a muted look to them. And while the noise level is one of the biggest uh, issues with CCD sensors in general, and in particular with these, uh, I'll go over that in, in the negatives, um, and you're also not gonna get maybe quite the same clarity and sharpness as you're gonna get with a new, more modern CMOS sensor. The, there's something just incredible about the color that comes out of this thing. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples um, here at Glen Echo Park. Again, they're very cool colors here, so I think it's a great spot for us to take a look and see what this digital back can do. The next positive I wanna talk about with using this digital back, and I briefly touched on it in my last video, is the ability for you to rotate the back. And it might seem like a very simple thing, um, or maybe not a, a really important thing, but if, if you've done a lot of shooting, especially on a tripod, and you love shooting verticals like I do, I can't explain how great it is to be able to just simply rotate the back itself. So let me show you. So right now the digital back is in its regular horizontal position, um, but you can actually just pop it off and then simply rotate the whole back on its side and then it locks into place in the vertical orientation. So the beauty of this is that you can be still shooting on your tripod um, in, in the regular camera's just regular position there with the um, tripod socket on the bottom, yet be shooting vertical images. A um, Couple of issues with this, one being that the, of course all the, the controls and the screen itself are gonna be flipped on its side, so you have to kind of look at it um, sideways. Not a big deal once you get used to it. Um, and the nice thing too is that the image itself will actually rotate 
on the screen, so you don't have to actually, when you're review, reviewing your images, you don't have to actually physically turn to the side, which is nice. Why other manufacturers don't do this? Uh, I only know of a few digital backs that have this ability, and um, it's just such a really convenient thing to have. Um, for me, I love vertical shooting, especially when it's a four by three ratio. It just makes sense. All right, so the last pro that I wanna talk about is price, and this is, a, again, a really important one. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can spend as much as $7,000 and go ahead and pick up the most modern version uh, of the, um, or the, the newest model the Hasselblad has for their, uh, for their film camera, uh, which comes in around $7,000, so that's still a sizable amount to invest in. Uh, if you've got the money, I'm sure it's amazing, but if you're on a little bit more of a tight budget, uh, you have a couple thousand dollars to spend, uh, I, I think you can't go wrong with this P25 Plus. It's really important to think about when you're deciding between digital backs to consider the sensor size that the digital back has. Now, none of them are as large as the Hasselblad's original film back, which is uh, six by six centimeters square. The average digital back sensor size is 44 by 33 millimeters. So when you compare that to the original six by six centimeter square film size, uh, the, the, the difference is, is extremely noticeable. So you're looking at a much smaller section of the image circle being used um, compared to the original film back. So ideally, the bigger the sensor size, the, the closer you're gonna be getting to that classic film look and really the benefits of using a medium format camera in the first place. So most digital backs have three different options in terms of sensor size. You have the smallest one, which the, the newest Hasselblad uses, which is the 44 by 33 millimeters. Um, then you step up to this one, um, which I believe is 48.9 by 37.6, it's something close to that. I'll put the number down here uh, in case I mess it up. Um, and then you've got the largest size. So I think this this um, this P25 Plus is kind of the sweet spot because it's right. It really is right in the middle there in terms of the sensor size. So you're getting more of the benefits of medium format without having to really break the bank and go all out with that largest size. Okay, so we got to talk about the negatives now, and there are several. Um, but again, it's really important to note that this is a, a significantly older um, digital back, so a lot of these issues are gonna get resolved with the newer models. Um, but again, you gotta really sort of weigh the pros and cons there if you wanna spend uh, 7,000 or more to pick up that newer Hasselblad or the newer models of the phase one digital back. So just something to think about. But the first real issue I wanna talk about is the noise. And while, uh, as I mentioned before, noise is an issue with every CCD sensor, it's really prominent on these older phase one models. The ISO only goes up to 800, uh, which is pretty limiting. Uh, you really wanna be on a tripod most of the time uh, or out in mostly sunny um, weather, even a day like today uh, where it's overcast, you could get away with shooting um, ISO 200, 400, but I really wouldn't go anywhere near uh, ISO 800, and honestly, 400 is kind of grainy. Another negative I want to talk about is the ergonomics of the digital back. Uh, I keep harping on this, but this is a almost 20-year-old piece of equipment, so you are just not going to get a lot of those modern conveniences uh, that we're so used to with, with, with newer cameras uh, and smartphones. There's no touch screen. There's a uh, very limited menu. You only have four buttons that control basic functions. Things like even reviewing the shot, uh, zooming in to check sharpness, that kind of thing, are honestly almost pointless uh, exercises because they're so cumbersome and they involve so many steps and using these four buttons is honestly kind of a, a nightmare. So I personally don't use them at all. Um, and I don't use the review function other than just to kind of check the overall composition of the scene um, the, of the shot and then also to check my levels just to make sure that I'm, I'm exposing the scene properly. But otherwise, honestly, like a lot of the extra things that you can do, like uh, again, checking for fo focus and zooming around the image, you can do them. I don't recommend it. Another negative I want to talk about is the battery life in this digital back. These lithium ion batteries, um, 
they just don't last long. I've got a couple um, on me, and I burn through them in honestly a couple hours of pretty heavy shooting. So just something to keep in mind when you're out there and you're shooting, um, have a bunch on, on hand and charged up. The, uh, the charger itself, I'll take a picture, show you, is, is awesome. Actually, it's got this nice cradle and it fits two batteries in it. Um, so that's, I guess, a positive, but again, just keep in mind that you're not gonna get more than maybe uh, 100 shots out of each, each battery. All right, briefly, the last negative I wanna talk about is that the back itself is a little bit finicky. And what I mean is that you need to use the sync cable to match up the, uh, sync the lens up with the digital back itself. And every now and then it just simply will not capture the image. Um, just something that maybe we're not used to with modern digital cameras. Yeah, we just expect them to work all the time. It's just not the case here. Uh, I would say maybe that happens maybe, oh, once out of every um, 20 times. So it's not a deal breaker. It's, uh, you know, you're not most likely shooting action with this thing anyway. So it's not like you're gonna miss um, real special moments there, hopefully. But something to consider. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's all for, for now. I hope that was helpful. I mean, and if you're you know, deciding on picking up one of these digital backs, let me know below in the comments if I can help out in any way with answering any questions. I uh, just love using the setup, and I hope you do as well. All right, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.